We don't even, we don't actually know how much uh, our hearing is dependent upon our sight. Let me give an example. If you see a report, for instance, on television, say from Iraq, and there's an odd kind of satellite uplink issue where you're seeing the picture and the mouth moving, but you're hearing the words like a second later, suddenly it's very hard to understand, whereas it wasn't, it, it, it's not when the, the, the voice and, the, and the, the picture are perfectly in sync. So uh, there's, there's a lot that has to do with, with your sight of that face that has to do with being heard, uh, as does just the hearing itself. For instance, if you are in rehearsal for something and you take a uh, microphone and you put it in the back row of the theater and then go back and listen to the rehearsal uh, afterwards, I would be very surprised if you were actually able to understand more than about 10% of the play. You would be shocked to find out just how unintelligible you actually are uh, when you're only purely hearing the voice. The face makes a lot of sense of the voice and helps the audience understand things that they wouldn't un otherwise understand. There are probably words in the show that I performed last night that you don't use or don't come across very often, but contextually and given my characterization, you may have uh, made an instantaneous decision about what that word means and gone on let, and allowed it to go on and forgot about it, uh, just given the understanding that that, of what was going on from the context of the scene. Um, let me, uh, another uh, consideration is that we don't speak complete words anymore. And this is, this is probably the biggest issue with, uh, with understanding actors on stage is that we long ago gave up the practice of speaking final consonants of words. Those of you who, who, who all had studied a foreign language at some point, okay, everybody, just about, and uh, you listen to tapes or CDs uh, in which they are reciting that language and speaking clearly, and you understand the language, and you may go two years, four years of studying it, and little by little you get what's being said, and then you go and you have a conversation with a native speaker of that language. How does that conversation go? Very badly. <laughs> Would you please slow down? Because that native speaker long ago gave up speaking entire words, just the way you have and the way that you don't know that you've given up speaking entire words. Then the native speaker may turn around and speak more loudly for you, but still not speak the entire word. And so you still don't understand it any better than you would otherwise. What happens in practice, in rehearsal for instance, is we all come to rehearsal. On the first day of rehearsal, we crack open the book and we sit around in a circle and we read our parts. And as a group, we understand the play, we follow what happens, we understand the context, we laugh at the jokes because we see the jokes right there in front of our faces. We then go about rehearsing and memorizing and practicing and little by little we assimilate the play and we work on it and develop it and it isn't until, say, six weeks later that we let an audience in to hear what we have to say. And suddenly the audience doesn't understand it and we discover that what we've been doing all this time has been performing for each other and we all already know what's being said. The very first time that someone who doesn't know what's being said arrives in the space uh, is, is going to be when the audience gets here and then we discover what's really understood. 